Redmond to Cupertino, we have a problem. Freddy, we're losing control over the entire system. We're being invaded. Invaded by air. There's nothing we can do. It's too late. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Android Invasion. I'm Bruce yeah. Wagner. This is Manny Mena. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, today's episode of Android Invasion, our inaugural uh, event, is brought to you by our beloved sponsors, Carpe VM. That's C A R P E V M dot com. Carpe VM Video Marketing. Carpe VM sees your market, say it with video. They will help you create an online video for your website to sell the product or service that you're marketing very professionally. And Mezzi Grill, M-E-Z-E -E, Grill, MezziGrill.com, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. And TradeHill.com. TradeHill.com is the easiest place to buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin for currency online. Use the referral code to get 10% off your trades for life at TradeHill.com. TH-R141 and US Gold Coins. Authentic US rare gold and silver coins are trusted advisor for excellent investments in numismatic gold and silver coins. USGoldCoins.com. And you if uh, nobody knows what Bitcoin is uh, for Trade Hill, just check out the Bitcoin show, also on Only One TV. Exactly. And this way it'll give you a better understanding, hopefully. Exactly. Bitcoin. Who doesn't know what Bitcoin is? Bitcoin is like the new, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Bitcoin. It's like, it's the, like new the new internet. Meme. Is the it meme or meme? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the new internet the new of internet. money. Internet 3.0. Yes. <laughs> yep. Electronic cash. So check out the Bitcoin show. We have, actually, we do the Bitcoin show every weekday here on OnlyOneTV.com every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and El Show de Bitcoin in Espanol every Wednesday, that's weekly, at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So join us for that. So today we're going to talk Android, Android operating system, right? Yeah, which is uh, blowing up like crazy. That's why we call it Android Invasion. Uh, it's almost as popular as Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> I think Android is a little more popular now. Hopefully, if yeah. Bitcoin gets as popular as Android, I think that'll be a great day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're doing more activations, there's more devices installed with Android on than there is on the iPhone. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think all they have to do is beat uh, Nokia's, like, proprietary OS. Mm -hmm. That's on most of the dumb phones out there. And yeah. then, you know, Android will take over from I've heard Nokia has been number one for a long time, but they're, long time. they're actually doing... Uh, Poorly. Yes. There, you know, it's it's it's, and actually, I think there have been more um, new Android devices sold than iPhones for a long time now. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's, it's I mean, it used to be like Steve Jobs or somebody said, you know, uh, well, we still have more devices out there, like, mm -hmm. but he's counting old iPhones, and but as far as new devices, by far, Android is even old devices. I think that's been surpassed. Yeah. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and somebody please correct me if I am wrong, mm -hmm. um, that. Android has surpassed iPhone in you know number of installs, number of total devices, number of active devices. So I think mm -hmm. Android you know officially surpassed iPhone in mostly every way. Pretty much every number you could possibly measure, I guess. So. Yeah, I guess if you're measuring, you know, like well, let me not even say yeah, it. Who knows? <laughs> iPhone bash. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So obviously, Android has come of age, and which is a great thing for Google because Google has created this Android. What, what most people don't know, I think, uh, mo probably most Android users don't know, is that Android is based on Linux. Linux is the is a free open source operating system, and mm -hmm. and Android is basically a it, flavor of Linux based on Linux. Yes, yeah, so it used to be a part of the official fork. Uh, mm -hmm. for Linux, but mm -hmm. it didn't last too long, mm -hmm. just because it differs so, the kernel differs like very greatly between mm -hmm. the stock kernel that runs on your computer or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's completely all open source. The only thing that isn't open source is the proprietary Google apps. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's great about Android is that it allows you to install an open source operating system on your phone without the Google proprietary stuff, if mm -hmm. you so chose. Mm -hmm. So that's completely different than what iPhone does and what most handset manufacturers have done for a long time. So Android's encouraging people, you know, to to use your hardware, you know, 
mm-hmm. utilize your hardware like you're supposed to, to its use fullest, it. Yeah. yeah, and not succumb, you know, to carriers or manufacturing telling you how to use the device. Because it is your hardware. Let's face it, I mean, you bought the thing, they sold it to you, and they told mm-hmm. you you were buying it. It's basically a handheld computer. But then to be told by these companies, whether it's a cell phone carrier or it's Apple or whatever manufacturer, to say that, no, 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 we don't approve of this application. Mm-hmm. We don't approve of you looking at this or running that. I mean, it's just... Yeah, uh, it's a yeah. or bootloader. Exactly. So that's the thing. The hacky stuff. So that's why hackers love Android, of course. Mm-hmm. But I think that mainstream users really love it now because that you oh, can yeah. do so much more with it. Yeah, and you know what's funny? People will love Android and they haven't even tapped into like 1% of oh, what yeah. it's capable. Yeah. So that's just... There's so much improvement for Android and... Uh, even if you go on the first ever Android device, which was the G1, which I used to own, mm-hmm. that has an insane amount of support. Mm-hmm. So what they effectively done is there's a community, you know, that's still very into the G1, still using it daily, mm-hmm. and uh, they basically extended its life. It runs the latest version of Android, which is 2.3, mm-hmm. which is officially only on the Nexus S, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's been keeping up. Sometimes the G1 will get certain updates. Uh, you know, from the hacker community than many mm-hmm. other phones mm-hmm. will. Yeah. So that's always been interesting. But the G1, if you still have it, upgrade <laughs> is so frustratingly slow. <laughs> yeah. I, I went from the G1 to the G2 and uh, absolutely love the G2. Everybody I've heard uh, who has a G2 it loves it. Crazy, yeah, but... it's an amazing phone. Absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. I don't know if you guys could see this, but has a keyboard, completely yeah, touch screen. Oh, yeah, you can show it in there. Um, it's oh, touch yeah, you screen. Just, yeah, there it, it has a QWERTY keyboard, um, Free keyboard, full keyboard. Um, and the um, at the time that it came out, uh, stock, that was like the fastest phone on benchmarks, even though it's only clocked at 800 megahertz stock. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the phones like, at the time were, you know, <laughs> like one gigahertz or whatever. So um, I love absolutely it. love the phone. The only thing it doesn't have is HDMI out. Mm-hmm. which some of the newer phones have. Yeah, not that many, but some do. Yeah, and also they have the new phones that have dual core processors, which <laughs> is insane, because you have two tiny processors on your phone and a GPU. No, 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 no wonder, really. yeah, GPU are great, because they're going to do Bitcoin mining. And, you know, like <laughs> we were talking about earlier about, you know, um, actually Chris, who's our producer today, was talking about how, does your phone ever get hot in your pocket? Like, yeah, well, you know, it may be, I was joking about maybe the fan isn't working because they are, they're like super mm-hmm. computers. They're yeah. just, they're absolutely amazingly mm-hmm. powerful computers and there's no ventilation, there's no fan yeah, or anything. It it's works. amazing. They don't all get hot. Yeah. But um, it's funny that you bring that up because that makes me remember my friend had like one of the first generation smartphones that were coming out, which weren't that smart compared to phones nowadays. Mm-hmm. But like, he's like, hey man, you could hear like the drive totally go. So like you, you put it to your ear and you could hear like some some fans or but or some a fan drive. or a yeah drive? this was like years ago I was still um, like maybe a freshman or a sophomore <laughs> in high school. It's amazing. Yeah. You could hear the memory process, hear the processor. Yeah, Whatever, like the electric. No, no, so well, that... It would be either the fan or the hard drive if it was in a phone. They had a hard drive. Well, they probably had like yeah, a big it phone. was a fan. It was a fan. <laughs> a fan and it a phone. It had to be the fan. That's yeah. nuts. It so, was nuts. Yeah, it's like, it's just crazy how far they've come so fast. And now, you know, I've been saying, I've been a huge fan. Of, for first of all, people who know me, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, my Twitter name is Bruce Wagner, of course. Um, I, you'll know that I've been a huge fan of uh, mm-hmm. open source everything and um, love Linux. So, I mean, we, we standardize on Ubuntu Linux mm-hmm. for all of our desktops. The only time we use uh, Mac or Windows is when we absolutely have no other choice because it's just the only thing that really works well. But aside from that, we pretty much use Ubuntu Linux on everything. So we're yeah. super, super uh, pro free open source. And so I loved Android from the beginning because it's based on Linux mm-hmm. and, and like you said, the whole thing's open source. Oh, speaking of open source though, mm-hmm. um, I read, uh, it's been a while, but I remember reading something about Honeycomb that they had not open sourced it yet. Has that changed? Um, to be completely honest with you, I have no idea about that, but um, Maybe the chat room can hey, tell us. eventually <laughs> it all has to be um, released open source unless it's uh, proprietary from Google, like Google Maps, Google Goggles, uh, Gmail, what have you. All of that is proprietary, but mm-hmm. according, if I'm not mistaken, once again, um, it's like an agreement between um, 
the companies that sort of like invested in Google, mm -hmm. uh, which is from Aesop, the Android, something or, or have you, mm -hmm. um, they all have to, they all contribute to that code and mm -hmm. it's maintained openly. So well, now the, they, Jim, maybe they have the right to release it later mm. and while they're developing it, they can't release it or something like that. Um, Jim, who is it? Jimmy McNutty in the chat room says, um, Bruce, they've, they have said that they do not plan to open source Honeycomb. That's what I thought I had read. I just didn't That's know if there was anything new since then. So I don't know how they're getting well, away with I, that. I know that um, when but, I read a few weeks ago that uh, they were planning to eventually, not oh. anytime soon, merge Honeycomb with uh, the other flavors of Android so that it would be the same Android operating system for phones and tablets. Right. But that's probably not um, anytime soon. Okay, here's another update from Jimmy. Oh, and first, uh, a, a, a uh, qualifier from Rob who says, first rule of life, do not trust any information provided by the chat room. <clears throat> but <laughs> meanwhile, um, Jimmy says, <clears throat> they're going to open source the next version, but they said that Honeycomb was focused so much on tablets that they broke some of the basic phone functionality, so I don't know. Yeah, absolutely, that's a problem because people were trying to port over Honeycomb to the phones, mm -hmm. and they were running into a lot of issues, but I just imagine it's that. It's just some sort of, An intermediary you know, thing. Yeah, it's like a caveat that they have in the contract that allows them while they're developing it, probably, right. uh, you know, not to, or have the choice to open source it or not open source it. Because usually um, it gets released um, as ASAP code, which is the open source version of Android. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it either gets released simultaneously with the phone, um, mm -hmm. just before the phone, or a little bit after. It's usually a little bit after, so developers could support the phone early on. Okay. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that. Yeah, I hope out. it stays open source because that's the that's you know one of the I, hugest advantages. I doubt that it would ever go closed source. I hope not. E even <laughs> then, um, the hacker community is a very resourceful community. Yeah. So that wouldn't stop them, you know, from running the or forking, forking over mm -hmm. the latest version <clears throat> of the open source Android and just supporting it on future models. You know. Right. So I'm sure that wouldn't be too tough. Cool. I wanted, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is <clears throat> just uh, kind of our, our uh, top apps, like the, the, the apps that uh, you can't live without, just to start off. And I think that's a good thing to talk about. And uh, this is real apropos for me because I have um, the, uh, what is it, Optimus LGM from Metro PCS. I love Metro PCS because um, it's $50 a month, including tax. I mean, that's, and there's no contract. So. Yeah. They've gone from the slowest data network, I think, the slowest data network in America to the fastest. With uh, Metro PCS's new uh, LTE service, mm -hmm. I was getting like eight megabytes down, eight megabytes up. It's really, really megabits. slick. Megabits. Megabits, sorry, megabits. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, this phone is not LTE, but, uh, but it's like one of their first L uh, Android um, uh, uh, phones mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that they've come out with. So that's what I have. Now, one of the things that, that happened to me was I kept, you know, you keep getting, this one didn't have quite enough phone memory. So I kept getting memory full on the phone itself okay. and you move all the apps to the SD card and all that. I have some advice for you after mm -hmm. you tell your story. Okay, okay. And so I kept getting phone, you know, memory full. For, this is for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. So I just have to whittle down. I'm like, okay, if I want to install a new app, I have to delete an old app that I don't use anymore and played that game and moved as many as I could to the SD card. But eventually I started getting SD card is full. So the SD card is full and the memory is full mm -hmm. and okay, fine, deleted some stuff. But ultimately, it started acting up. My Gmail app was not, lo it was not notifying me of new mail. And I mean, granted, I had like 42 Gmail accounts or something tied to it. But it wouldn't notify me of new mail unless I would go in there and hit refresh. Mm -hmm. And then it would pop in. That won't work because I like, this is my right hand. Yeah. I have to have notification instantly of an email. So finally, I said, okay, I've got to do a master reset. I got to wipe the whole thing out. And luckily, with um, the good thing is that with the Android um, operating system tied to Gmail and, and your Google account, all of the data is backed up. All the contacts and everything yeah. are backed up. I'm not a big fan of that, but it is useful. And then now there's like no way to back out of it, so <laughs> I just keep on using it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that because it is open source, that one day they'll be able to. Uh, you better select your cloud that you want to sync to. They That'd are be cool. working on that. Um, mm. I do not remember the project's name, um, but there is another project that's not CyanogenMod um, that 
they are working on a way to have no Google code running on the phone. Uh -huh. Now this means no Google Maps, no Gmail, nothing of that nature. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very interesting to see that effort go on because I think in the future that might be there might be a lot of people more interested in that, especially um, since a couple of years ago there was documents released, you know, that AT&T was, you know, snooping and, you know, supposedly um, some branches of government could listen in onto cell phone devices. Mm, because yeah, back sold. doors and things. Yeah, so um, it'll be interesting uh, once that happens because you would know exactly what code is being run on there and what its function and purpose is. So that'll be interesting to see how that pans out in the future. Wow, yeah, I didn't yeah. hear of that. One of the, um, crap, I'm not even gonna mention it because I don't remember his name. Mm -hmm. It might have been, uh, he's a very big Linux guy, but mm -hmm. uh, he finally disclosed you know how he set up his Android phone, and he uses that project. Oh. And he doesn't use anything Google related. And oh, we have to get like him that. on as a guest. We yes. have to find out his name. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig that up. Um, so, so I wanted to talk about uh, after I did the master reset. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so just so you know, as the, you know, audience, Manny's a real tech geek guy, and I'm, I'm not. I'm like the basic user, so I, I just kind of use it for, you know, like uh, personal productivity, right? And uh, so he's going to talk about a lot more technical level, and I'm going to talk more of it as a basic user. Mm -hmm. And here's one of the one of the most interesting features of the Android phone, and that is the battery. As you can see, my battery just died, and <laughs> so this is a problem. Now, um, one one thing you can do, though, this is a tip from Dr. Frugal, the the Frugal Show we have here on Only One TV, is uh, you can actually go to eBay, and I'm sure you know probably a lot of people have figured this Even out by Amazon. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon, eBay, whatever, and buy um, extra batteries. And so that's what I used to do. Um, uh, there, you know, it's, I've gone through phases with the phones. So what I used to do is, um, and it also has a feature, you can actually take the battery out and put another one on. This is, Apple hasn't thought of this yet. It's very innovative. You can actually change the battery. Yeah, so anyway, you don't have to actually throw the whole thing in the recycle bin, you know, which is really great for the planet. Um, I mean, I know that on Apple iPhones, you can send it in to have them replace yeah, the battery, but, but it costs the same as a new phone with a contract. It's ludicrous. It's so crazy. So anyway, it's just, it's just a gimmick to get you to buy another phone, mm -hmm. obviously. Well, anyway, with the Android phones, um, I've never heard of one that you couldn't change the battery on. And so what I used to do, um, he would find these new batteries, and they're, they're probably made in the same plant as, as, as the manufacturer's batteries. I doubt it, because I have a story about those batteries. I bought one oh. for my G1, mm -hmm. super extended one turned my G1 literally into a brick. Oh. And after a while of heavy use, I completely fried the battery. Uh -oh. It overheated so bad that I thought it was gonna explode. Wow, okay, yeah. so one thing is you gotta- It was an $18 battery, so. Well, I the ones that I bought were four. Four ninety-five, four dollars and ninety-five, and I bought three of them. And actually, it was like four dollars and ninety-five cents for the battery, or nine ninety-five for the battery with a battery-only charger. So I could keep one battery-only charger in the wall. Mm. And um, actually, I bought like three batteries and a battery-only charger. So I'd always have one on the charger and two fresh batteries in my pocket, one in the mm -hmm. phone. So I'd keep the fully charged batteries in my left pocket, the dead mm. batteries in my right pocket, and I was never without juice. The problem with that, and I, the reason I haven't done it with this, is that I'm not that committed to this phone, because I know I'm going to get a new phone. So I don't want to go and buy a whole bunch of batteries for this phone when I know I'm going to get a new one next month. You know, yeah. so, that's a, so now, now my next plan is to actually have two phones. Instead of having an extra battery, now see they've got the standard charger with the USB charger. Mm -hmm. They all use the same charger. So now instead of batteries in my left and right pocket, I'm going to have phones in my left and right pocket. And this is where the Google Sync actually comes in handy because I can have the same email, the same text message, everything on both phones. What would be the advantage of that versus two? <clears throat> versus two batteries? Mm -hmm. Well, one is prying this stupid little thin piece of plastic off and popping out the batteries is sort yeah. of a little bit of a pain. But I the like other thing is, Online. That I can literally just plug it into the charger and then put the other one on. And the the uh, the other there's a couple a couple advantages. One is you can have you need a G2. I'm sorry. A G2. But hold on. It has a battery hinge thing. I just push this and then yeah the battery. yeah that's what they need. I mean some phones have that you know that's one of the features I always look at when I buy a new phone is how easy that one of the first things I look at is how easy is it to get out the battery cover off and how easy is it to pop it out. You know how they have those. Um, you know how the like the SD cards on some mm -hmm. devices you push it in and then yep. you push it out like the old uh, SIM chips were. Mm -hmm. That's what I want 
the phone manufacturers are watching this, I want you to make a battery that I can slide into a little slot and I just push it and it pops out and push another one in. That's what I want. I want easy to use changing of the battery. That's one of the features I look for. But in the meantime, I'm not committed to this phone. I'm not going to keep it that long So, because the phones are just disposable. There's going to be a phone of the month club. That's another story. But what I'm doing now is y y the, one of the huge advantages to doing it this way is I can have one on Verizon and one on Metro PCS. I don't have a signal on Verizon. I can use Metro PCS mm -hmm. and so on like that. You might want to try um, these Verizon, uh, Metro PCS and Sprint and RL CDMA. So maybe you should get like a T-Mobile or a Simple Mobile and then have a, have a GSM phone and a CDMA mm -hmm. phone. Yeah. Because I'm sure the CDM, CDMA coverage is the same. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, it's not. Because it be like in my building where I live, mm -hmm. you know, when we go, once you go up past the 40th floor, Verizon doesn't work. But Metro PCS does. Oh, go figure. We, I get in, in Manhattan, I get a better signal in most places with Metro PCS than with Verizon. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And it's like, you know... 50 bucks a month, including tax and everything, yeah. with no contract. Yeah, like I'm committed to my phone, my mm -hmm. G2, so yeah. <laughs> um, that kind of limits where I could go. I, mm -hmm. I did have uh, T-Mobile's FlexPay, mm -hmm. but then uh, they started throttling. Mm -hmm. um, so after five gigs, um, it would get throttled to basically 56K speeds, where I max out at like three and a half kilobytes a second, mm -hmm. which is painstakingly slow. So I used to tether and do a lot of stuff like that. One night, I think I literally did like over 18, 20 gigs, you know, just downloading stuff from Usenet mm -hmm. off of my phone. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, they, they caught hold and, you know, <laughs> FlexPay users were subjected to the same, you know, throttling uh, policy. So now I'm on Simple Mobile, 60 bucks a month instead of 90 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And it's unlimited everything where after five gigs it gets throttled anyway. So. Oh, they're throttling you too on that now? Yeah, it's throttled uh. on because uh, Simple Mobile is like a subsidiary of T-Mobile. It's just mm. a rebranded T-Mobile <laughs> yeah. that's cheaper. Reseller kind of thing, yeah. yeah. I wonder if there are any companies that you know, um, if there are any companies out there that, that have really, truly unlimited, not unlimited up to a certain limit, you know, this nonsense yeah. marketing, what, they, what is that? Yeah, because it technically throttling. it is unlimited, but at three oh, and a half super fast speeds second, yeah, until we, it. It, it's like super fast speed until it's not, it's unlimited until you reach the limit. Like, what is that? It's like, yeah. it's called false advertising. You know, last time I checked, it's like Yeah, crazy. it's like if you buy a car and then, <laughs> If you drive over 100 miles in one month, after yeah. 100 miles, you can only go 20 miles per hour. Right. That's what it feels like. I want to go back to... Or uh, rent a car with unlimited mileage as long as you go less than 10 miles. Yeah. <laughs> what is right. that? Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. It's, it's really dumb. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, it makes sense from a profit perspective. Oh, well, yeah, of course. That's just like, you know, Apple is a genius when it comes to their finances. It's not, not, yeah, they, yeah, well, they're marketing gurus. They wrote the book, they wrote the book on selling inferior products at a premium. So, that's right. Um, <laughs> I give them props for that. Yes, that's true. If you want, so you know, maybe uh, if you're smart, buy Apple stock, but not their products. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, but the thing is, so um, I'm going to have to go because my battery died. <laughs> it's so funny because we were talking about that right before the show. And yeah. he's like, oh, my battery's low too. Oh, everybody who has an Android phone, everybody who has any kind of smartphone has a, a low battery problem. Yeah, uh, there is ways to mitigate that. And I think mm -hmm. we should like dedicate a show to that in the yeah. future. Yeah. Uh, just tips and tricks for uh, maximizing battery life. Right. Because I know my friend, she's always complaining that her battery is dead and she has like the big droid X with a huge screen. <laughs> Everybody. So, so yeah, um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and uh, mm -hmm. it'll be just, it'll be nice to do, you know, yeah. sort of an episode Definitely. on that. Definitely, we'll do that. And, it, and especially about the uh, task killers and all that. There's, a, yeah, I know, we, we know there's a lot of misconceptions yeah. about that. So we'll do, we'll dedicate a whole episode to that. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go by memory to uh, my favorite apps. So this will this will be a testament to how important they are to me that I can remember them. <laughs> so uh, if, if you don't, I'll go first and, and say, when I reinstalled, you know, I actually did a master reset and all that. Mm -hmm. I set it up right after I say, changed my wallpaper. Um, the, the apps that I decided to install are Google Voice. It's absolutely essential. I mean, if you don't have, if you have a Google account or if you don't have a Google account or a Gmail account, just get one, it's free. And then Google, the word Google Voice, 
and uh, get a Google Voice number. It's the most brilliant thing. It's amazing. It's a phone number that's free, mm -hmm. and it's a phone number that won't change. You can uh, you can be like me and have two different phones on two different carriers, mm -hmm. or you can change carriers every Tuesday, mm -hmm. and your phone number never ever changes. Yeah, I use Google Voice when I want to post stuff on Craigslist um, <laughs> because I could just set um, when somebody calls me from Google Voice, it shows Google Voice on my phone. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, it's Google Voice. I posted something recently on Craigslist. Let me pick this up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's how I usually go about it where, you know, because you could sort of control if you get mm -hmm. notified right away on your phone and stuff right. like that. And for A lot of people do. Though, like, a lot of people get into Google Voice by using it as an alternate number for their business, their mm -hmm. side business, their Oh, absolutely. Ads. But for me, I, I did that for a little while, but then I realized that no, I, I, all of our numbers are mm -hmm. only Google Voice. I never, I don't even know my own numbers. I'm sure I have a Dr. Frugal approved tip. Uh, yeah. What I would do... Um, with T-Mobile um, FlexPay, which I th it's whichever, you know, which one, they discontinued one of the prepaid services, but mm -hmm. um, my phone would cut out because, you know, I'd forget to go pay it or whatever because I don't want a contract. Mm -hmm. um, and I would still have data. So using the data, I could use Google Voice for text messages. Right. So I would still be able to communicate That's at right. least somewhat, yeah. a little bit, yeah. even in those times. So I'm sure there has to be a plan out there somewhere that does you know just data and just data you could do you could it's it, we could delve even deeper to that where you could just get a sip service on your phone and then route that to your google voice Absolutely. and then you have just data and you, you know you have a phone basically or skype although skype is a lot of times skype is in bed with the carrier and they block skype from being used unless it's on wi-fi and things like that yeah. but anyway but yeah there are lots of ways to to get around if you don't yeah, it's a mini computer the, the i know and, and now are endless. the the younger generations are really not talking on the phone they're not even using it it's funny that we still call it a phone because most people don't even talk on it they just yeah. text, text text it's a text, computer it's just a little facebook computer. and twitter and all that garbage we really need a new name for it so Google Voice, okay now, so when you go into the Android market, there's an app for Google Voice. So it's just mm. Google Voice. Make sure it's published by Google and it's spelled right. It's not, you know, some other app. But yeah. Google Voice app is brilliant because it notifies you of any incoming text messages, mm -hmm. missed calls. It just gives you all the functionality of Google then Voice. Then there's like a shortcut that you could add on your Android desktop mm -hmm. and it lets you pick, you know, uh, use Google Voice for all my calls, only international calls. Right. Don't use it at all or mm -hmm. ask me every time I call. Exactly. And that'll be handy too when I want to call somebody from my Google Voice, you know. Mm -hmm. I could set it so it always asks me and when I know I'm not going to use it in the future, yeah. I set it off. So right. And of course, like thing. I said, since we only use Google Voice, I have it set for all calls. And so it's brilliant. We used it when we went to Spain. We'd make phone calls and it's two cents a minute and, you know, any you could just be at a, with a laptop at a Wi-Fi and just lit literally through Gmail, you could make calls from Spain to Spain, you know, and two cents a minute is, you know, even yeah, inter even outside of the US, yeah. yeah. It's really brilliant. And it's free within, I think all the calls in the US and Canada are free, mm -hmm. it's so slick. I mean, and, and Google Voice does things that I've never seen anything else do well. And that is, like when someone leaves a voicemail, mm -hmm. It'll actually transcribe the message. When you oh, play absolutely. it, it actually does like the bouncing ball. It plays along with the words, mm -hmm. and it, you can have it come in as a text message, as an yep. email. So I can be I get sitting. that all the time. That's very handy. I, I love that. that. I love it. Um, you know, it would be the deadliest combination <laughs> if you get the magic box, which is like a forty-dollar little USB key that's basically it provides you with SIP service, right? Mm -hmm. Unlimited for like twenty bucks for no, like five bucks a year or twenty bucks a year. Something crazy like that, right? Yeah. It's Are you Magic talking about Magic Box. Jack? Magic Jack. Oh, I have those. Ma I've got Magic a lot of Jack. Those. Yeah. 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 There used to be a way. I don't mm -hmm. know if there still is. It'd be awesome if you could. You could reverse, um, reverse engineer the Magic Jack so you get the SIP number, mm -hmm. and then you could program that SIP number into here. Oh it no, I'm way ahead voice. of you. I'm gonna have to tell you about that. I used oh, yeah, to. I have all these. I have a whole drawer full of Magic Jacks, and they're really good you for have the new call forwarding. Yeah. yeah, we have this new thing. We call it Bread Jack. All it is, it's a SIP adapter and uh, it's got two lines it's so simple we'll do a tutorial video on how to do this but you yeah. basically you get free phone service um, each box it costs 34.95 something mm -hmm. like 35 bucks you order it online and then um, it's a sip adapter you program it with a little web browser super simple mm -hmm. like a little router and it's got two regular phone jacks and so you can actually have his and hers, or business and personal, or, mm -hmm. or you can have two lines with one box, have two boxes and have four lines, have three boxes, have six lines, you can run a business on it. And what's That's really cool, because it's Google Voice, 
it's every call. Well, there's okay. So you have to have the box. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have this other thing called SIPgate. Just Google the word SIPgate, yeah. and it gives you a free USA phone number for, and it's free for incoming calls. Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, I don't know, a couple pennies a minute outgoing. But we never use it for outgoing. We never yeah. put any money. We only use it for incoming. And as you know, with Google Voice. When you make a call from your browser, it makes an incoming call. So it calls that USA number, it calls the SIP box. So what we do from the phone or from the computer or the laptop, we just hit call on the person's name and then the phone, the landline, like the landline, voice over IP thing rings, you answer and then it's ringing. So that's how it works. So awesome. we've, we've had free phone service for, I don't know, how long, like a year. And we, so we have two sick. lines at home. Yeah. One for him, one for me, and it's so simple. We make so all incoming calls come in that way, of course, and all outgoing calls you just have to go to the computer or the or the you know regular phone and hit the app and then dial. Up. We have to look yeah. up the number per, anyway, and you yeah. hit call and boom, the phone rings and you're calling. I'm gonna me. figure out a way if there's a way to do something similar on Android. Yeah. I'm sure there is. And the, by the way, the drawback to the Magic Jack mm -hmm. is that it's it's a Windows only yeah. USB. Oh it's no, yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't want Windows. No, no, no. Yeah, it's stupid interface. Yeah. You have to not only even if you do have Windows, you have to leave it on. Yeah. If, if, if Windows does an update stuff. overnight, that, that's you have no what, phone. Yep. That's why people were trying to reverse engineer the SIP number so you wouldn't yeah. have to have it connected all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a big drawback. Okay. So yeah. Google Voice. That's my, that's my my first app and. Um, Let's see. Well, why don't you give us your first your set, your first one, and then we'll go. Um, that's a good question. I don't know which one I want to go over first. Um, well, let me I, jump to the second one. while you think about yeah. it? How's that? Okay. And I'll look so, at my phone. <laughs> my second one is actually the first app that I ever oh, I purchased. Couple, yeah. <laughs> okay. My first app that I ever purchased because um, I, I'll, I just, I'll do that one first. The first one I ever purchased. Okay. After okay. You're done. Yeah, yeah, because. Actually, it's the only one I've ever purchased, I think. I've never purchased an app except this one. And um, I just loved it so much I wanted to support the guy. So basically, I just thought of it as a donation. Mm -hmm. But it's called, uh, it's in the Android market and it's called Tape Machine. It's all one word put together, Tape Machine. Mm -hmm. And they have a Tape Machine free, um, which is actually perfectly good enough for me. But um, it has a one minute recording limit on WAV files or whatever. And then Tape Machine, the full version is, I don't know, like $3.99 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually purchased it. And then I got a new phone. And I purchased it again. I just kept purchasing it because I really support what the guy's doing. Don't you just have to buy it once? Yeah, you only, well, you, you can. You can have him transfer it and stuff. But I was like, eh, give him another $4. I was like, yeah. you know, I really appreciate the guy. So to me, it's a, it's a gift. It's a yeah. thank you gift. So, um, because you know, I could have gotten by with the free version, but what's really cool now, and actually, what's also really cool is that he's now the new version has a widget, so you can put this widget right on the screen, and it just takes two little icon spots, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got a record and play. And here's what I do with it. Okay, I've always wanted. I've used these things like Slidial. I don't know if you've ever seen Slidial. S L Y D I A L. You can Google that. It's mm -hmm. a really cool service to leave a voicemail for somebody without ringing their phone. Oh, okay. I've used that, but it doesn't always. It, it works. But it doesn't always work, and it's Wish okay. You and you have to actually call the person. But yeah. this is better. I can send a voicemail to absolutely anybody, even when I'm on an airplane, when I have no service, when I'm on the subway. There's absolutely no signal. Here's what I do: I just hit the on the widget. I don't even have to open the app. I just hit the widget and say, um, "Hey, Josh, how's the, how's the comedy sketch coming? Uh, did you hook up with uh, Dorothy? And are you shooting in Studio One th Thursday or something?" Yeah. And I just hit stop, and then I. Then I hit the share button and then type in J O S boom send and it just sent it out through Gmail. So what it and even if I have if I'm not online, of course it's the Gmail uh, email app now. It's sending this wave file, which is like lossless audio. It's unbelievable. They they hear it and they're like, whoa! It's yeah. so crystal clear, and they will receive an email with the audio file. And they just, and, you know, on the subject, I'll just put play or something, mm -hmm. you know, play this. Mm -hmm. And um, it's cool because I love being able to say something verbally because you can just say it so much faster and so much better. It's like calling them and leaving them a voicemail. Um, I even do it it's with like family. Like voicemail, yeah. Yeah, I even do it with family. I'll, I like record a big long message. Hey, I just want to say hey to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Blah 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 blah. And then hit go. And then I send it to my whole entire family. One little voice yeah. message. It's really cool. Um, the first app I ever purchased um, was Titanium Backup, which you would love because in the situation that you had, instead of writing every app down and having to re-download it, get your settings again and everything, yes. what Titanium Backup does is um, it allows you 
to backup apps individually, even system apps and settings. So you could back up your contact list, you could back up SMSs, uh, you could back up, you know, like APN settings that you had or Wi Fi APN passwords. Setting? APN is like um, the settings that it uses to connect uh, to the mobile service, to like T-Mobile or Simple Mobile oh. or Metro PCS. Mm -hmm. um, it's so how it, it knows like where to connect. So Titanium Backup does a really good job and then it has other crazy features. Like it could remove um, G2 um, if you don't like root it and do other stuff to it. Mm -hmm. It has like the security feature where certain apps are persistent even if you can't delete them. Oh. So this allows you a way to truly delete stuff like that. Oh, so um, you can you schedule rooted, regular right? backups. Yes, this is a root only app. Okay. You have to be rooted, but it is so worth it because you could change, especially if you change ROMs on a consistent basis or even once in the blue moon, it makes it so easy just to be able to like, okay, I, I use this app a lot. I want to keep this, back mm -hmm. all this stuff up. And then, you know, when I reinstall that ROM mm -hmm. or do whatever I have to do, I, it loads everything with the same settings as if I never deleted it. See, I told you he's a techie geek. That, that's the thing. It's, uh, we're going to have to definitely do a whole episode about how to root your phone. And, oh, and every phone's different. We're going to be rooting Chris's phone. Really? Okay, yes. cool. He has cool. a G2 as well. well Mine's do it rooted live. already and I'm running an outdated version. We'll do it live with no preparation. Live. Yeah. <laughs> live television. <laughs> That'll be a disaster, but we'll try it. Yeah. Every, every, isn't it true about rooting that every phone is different? Some oh, models absolutely. it's easy, some models it's a Absolutely. Pain. Um, like the G1, which I think it just got retired as a developer phone uh, recently, mm -hmm. um, was like completely, uh, like so easy to, you know, root. Well, Google uh, gave instructions on how to do that, right? Yeah, for the developer phone, I think it came rooted or, mm. or something crazy like that. Like a button. Then, yeah. Root, uh, unroot. There, actually, yeah, there's an app like that that does, you, you actually oh, for root, certain, unroot. Yeah. yeah, for some phones, they do have one-click root, as they call it. Mm -hmm. um, other phones, it's more complicated. Um, AT&T was like really bad where mm -hmm. they prevent... They only allowed you to install applications from the Android market. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you couldn't install stuff that wasn't available on the Android market, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of apps like that. Like Titanium Backup at the time, mm -hmm. the guy, he's in Italy or somewhere in Europe, and he couldn't have it on the Android market. So, you know, I, I found it through the XDA uh, developer forums mm -hmm. and um, you know, after a couple email exchanges, very helpful. I was like, you know what, I have to buy this, have to support him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's now on the Android market before you would have to buy it through PayPal. Why would he not be uh, allowed in the Android because, market? Because um, there's, there was a lot of issues about if you're in a certain country <coughs> and mm -hmm. the market didn't support paid apps, mm. um, you couldn't release it. Oh, app. is it a paid app? The, yes, it's a oh, paid app. How much it, is it? Um, it was on the Android market. It was like six bucks, okay. four or five bucks. It's worth it, whatever it sounds amount well it is. Worth it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the time, you know, it, it was just a donation type of thing. You got to choose, you know, four dollars, six dollars, eight dollars that you could send him. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually, they supported his country for paid apps, and now it's a paid app on the Android market, mm -hmm. as well as a free app. Uh, the free app was always on the market, mm -hmm. but it was limited where when it was restoring apps, mm -hmm. it would give you that window like to hit okay about the permissions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So what it does with um, the paid version is completely automated. Mm -hmm. So you just hit restore and it'll go through all 100 apps or X number of apps. Mm -hmm. It'll install it without any user intervention. Nice. Whereas on the free one, you have to keep a lookout for the pop-up, hit okay, yes, install, <laughs> which, I did yeah. once and it was torture. So I was like, Oh, just to sit and go through it all. Yeah. yeah for like 40 okay. something apps. It was absolute torture. It's so that was it. the first app that I bought. I've actually bought several. Wow. Like for Android, if I like something, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll buy it. I mm -hmm. won't even try to pirate it or anything like that. You know, uh, what I love about Android is anybody can start writing apps for it. Mm -hmm. And I know what it's like to write an app because yeah. I suck at programming. <laughs> so I have huge respect for those people. So, you know, when they write mm -hmm. something good, you know, I'll support it. No problem. Yeah. It's only like, what, two, three dollars. You know, that's right. nothing. I spend that on garbage every day. Exactly. The um, 
you know, they're, they're talking in the forum, they've mentioned Bitcoin a few times because we have the Bitcoin show here and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a lot of geeks are, are all about Bitcoin by this time. And so um, there's two things about that. Mm -hmm. um, one is just uh, a shout out because the Metro PCS dealer where I buy my phones actually accepts Bitcoin. And as far as I know, they're the first cell phone dealer, as far as I know, first cell phone dealer in the world to accept Bitcoins. And um, it's a Metro PCS dealer. Um, it's technically called Clear Wireless or something, but they don't mm -hmm. advertise that way. It's just a Metro PCS dealer. And they're in New York City, um, uh, 57th Street between 7th and Broadway. And they have another location on Ninth Avenue, just a couple doors south of 42nd Street. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in um, contacting them, we'll put the link in the show notes or uh, just send us an email at OnlyOneTV and we'll hook you up with them. But they actually sell phones and service and you can pay your monthly bill in Bitcoin, which is really cool. And they'll do That's it mail order too. Yeah. Because it is, it's prepaid or not, pre well, it's, it's without a contract. It's a non-contract mm -hmm. service. So you can actually uh, call them up on the phone and order the exact device you want. They'll activate it. Uh, and you send them Bitcoins and they'll send it to you mail order wherever that's you are. Pretty, that's pretty it's sick. It's very slick, I'm right? Say. I might have to uh, delve into that in mm -hmm. the future. They're Mike and Mark are the proprietors. They're brothers and they're awesome guys. And they've been into Bitcoin mm -hmm. since I told them about it. You know? Speaking of Bitcoin, um, I have two Bitcoin apps that I use. Um, the <laughs> first one, I think this one is uh, Bitcoin Alert. Yeah, this one is Bitcoin Alert. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if, if you might be able to show this, Bruce, mm -hmm. on, on that camera. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Hold on one second. We'll bring it up. Yeah, there. Uh, so it, it's basically the widget that I'm showing, and then you can show a graph. I've got a of bunch of activity. apps too. Um, Hold on, we're just uh, doing some producing magic over here. Which one is it? Let me look at it. Hold on. Oh, there it is. The perils of live TV. Yeah, can I try this guy? Uh, okay, well, you we have to switch it probably down there. So, but yeah, what I know, this is the Bitcoin Live. Oh, is this Mt. Gox Live? Is that what it's called? No, it's uh, Bitcoin Watch. Bitcoin Watch, right, right. I've oh, talked Bitcoin to these, Alert. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Alert. Alert? Yeah. I've talked to these guys because it tells the latest price on Mt. Gox, is that right? Yep, it tells you the latest price of volume of transactions. Just hit the button the latest, on the front of the box. Uh, bid and ask. Mm -hmm. um, it has the low and the and the, high, the lowest ask and the highest bid and then the last price. Yeah, it has um, that stuff on there. Um, there it goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, now my phone is off. You have to <laughs> hit, hit the Top. the OK button. The, okay. the menu. Yeah, the metal button uh -huh. down there twice. There it is. Okay, there you go. Okay. There we go. Here it is. Okay, so cool. So it's this widget right here on the top. It takes. It looks like it takes four icon rows going across. It, it's totally worth the desktop space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if and you're it, like me, and I'm checking every 15 minutes. Bid, ask, volume, low, high. Oh. And if you actually tap on the widget. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> Let me tap on it. Nothing's happening. Hold on. Um, <laughs> Might be delayed. Um, it's uh, you could do a, a graph. Hold on, um, I have throttled internet, so <laughs> really slow to load up the graph. The but you could show um, a graph, and it's going to show you a graph of the lit all the activity in the last twenty four hours. Show price graph. Hold on, it's it's loading. I, I have crappy. This is what I have to do with <laughs> the slow internet. Yeah, so it's going to be downloading this for a while. Yeah. I'm sure it'll take but a while. So the. Um, the uh, speaking of Bitcoin apps, yeah, you know, our hackathon that we have spawned off from our Bitcoin meetup actually uh, created an app that's in the Android market now. And uh, that's definitely a must have app. It's it's just simply called Bitcoin. It's got a funny logo with like these gold. From, I think it's called from Bitcoin Labs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just called Bitcoin and the publisher's Bitcoin Labs, which is their development group is actually BitcoinLabs.com. And uh, it's actually the first uh, mm -hmm. app that is actually a full-blown Bitcoin client. Yeah. It's still in alpha, so you don't want to put lots of money on it. Just uh, yeah. you know, pocket change to play with it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just some pocket change. Um, the way that it works is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Andrew. Um, yeah. 
which is one of the people behind Andrew, that. Gabriel, He's, all those guys. Yeah, yeah. very they're, talented people. Mm -hmm. And they're working on it. Like their their highest priority right now is to uh, improve it and make it more and more stable. Absolutely. Yeah, they have to deal with some interesting technical problems, and mm -hmm. um, they attack them. And uh, I'm from mm -hmm. what from our conversations, you know, it seems like a very efficient way to go about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's really cool. But you have to. Ha that's one of my must-have apps because you just have to have it. It, just for fun, if nothing else, because yeah. you can buy some bitcoins, put some bitcoins mm -hmm. on it, and and um, you know share, you know whatever, yeah. but, you know pay someone for lunch or whatever the deal may be. Mm -hmm. uh, another cool thing is I run Cyanogen Mod, which is an um, like an alternative ROM or firmware or operating system, which is all Android, all open source Android, mm -hmm. with none of the proprietary Google stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you know. It, it does facilitate the way to use uh, Google Apps on there, but um, it has built in these widgets um, for if you have a LED flash on your camera. Mm -hmm. um, I have two widgets. One says um, torch and one says bright. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, on oh, this right. particular one, the torch is, you know, just the regular what you see on cell phones. But if I hit the bright, it makes a huge difference. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like even... I'm sure you guys could see that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like ri ridiculously bright. This wow. thing has, I use this like on a daily basis. <laughs> so um, this Mine doesn't have a, a yeah, light. Yeah, <laughs> like I, at night you can literally blind oncoming traffic with this. Whoa. Like, it's like super bright and it's freaking awesome. So I love, you know, that they, <laughs> they, they thought about those, you know, little usability things in there. So if you haven't, it's sitting at Cyanogen Mod. It supports mm -hmm. almost every Android phone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. They support a, a crap load of phones, and um, and that's one of those that you have to root the phone and install this. This mod. is part of their firmware. Okay. So this is part oh, of Cyanogen okay. Mod. So it's not an app or anything. Yeah, it's. Yeah. There are apps that will turn on your light. Oh, absolutely, but yeah. yeah. But not as easy as this. You okay. know, having these two widgets. You that's know, one like, for like the regular intensity, mm -hmm. and then one for like the super bright one, which is awesome. Cool. Like, um, I. I have some apps that I use like religiously, mm -hmm. like um, there's one called Gentle Alarm. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty hectic and crazy schedule mm -hmm. that I'm still trying to get used to because uh, mm -hmm. I work, you know, apart mm -hmm. from this 50 hours a week at least. Mm -hmm. um, so Gentle Alarm is pretty cool because yeah. it has something called a pre-alarm. Mm -hmm. I have a very soft and subtle like alarm half hour before. Oh, that's nice. So the thinking is if like you're in the light phases of sleep, mm -hmm. it's going to gently wake you up where you're more refreshed, yeah. uh, you know, you're just more... More of a natural way of waking up. Yeah, you're just more awake, um, mm -hmm. alert, you mm -hmm. know, um, when you wake up in your deep sleep and like in the REM sleep, mm -hmm. that's when you wake up all groggy and stuff because mm -hmm. that's the process, you know, where you actually feel rejuvenated. Yeah. Um, so I have it set up, it's able to set up an infinite, I'm guessing, arbitrary amount of alarms and then I have like a series of alarms set up throughout the week, mm -hmm. you know, and then it has like safe alarms on top of it. So mm -hmm. it'll ring um, a super loud alarm, you know, if you haven't responded to anything mm -hmm. in a while mm -hmm. and you can set limits on everything and music and... It's called it's Gentle Alarm? Gentle Alarm. I'm going to install that because um, I have, I just use a regular alarm and people dude, are so used to this going the, eh, 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 you know, it, oh, it is out of absolutely sleep. amazing. This is Gentle Alarm. It, it has a little bit of a learning curve. Um, so, you know, don't like if you have a super important meeting or job interview the next day <laughs> and, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning, you have to wake up at eight, you know, don't install this. Because test it out a on a Sunday. Curve. Yeah. Test it out a couple of days before and make sure you get it working right. Um, will, it, will it alarm you even if the phone's on silent? Because I know that... Oh, absolutely, okay. yeah. It has settings for all of that. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you here. Like, you have profiles, and then you assign profiles to an alarm. Like, I have one called Rage, mm -hmm. and that's the one, like, <laughs> I have, like, an initial alarm where it'll play, like, The Doors, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is one of my favorite bands. Mm -hmm. And then another one, it, like super loud, it, it just plays Rage, Rage Against the Machine to so sort of, you know, make sure that I'm awake. Um, so, you know, I usually do it like that and on top of it has a safe alarm and That's it could cool. also fade in. So you could set a fade time so it'll mm -hmm. start softly and then start getting louder in tone. Mm -hmm. um, is is awesome. And then it has a night display too for the people who are into that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then cool. you can do quick alarms. It, it's awesome. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I, I purchased it. Um, after a couple of days using it, mm -hmm. um, 
it will change your sleeping experience. Cool. Or your waking up experience, I say. Cool. I want to talk about an app that is actually not even an app. It's mm -hmm. um, a feature of Android, and y you know, you guys, you may already all know about it, and this is old hat. But if, just in case you haven't, because I've been using an Android phone for I don't know since they came out, pretty much, mm -hmm. and I just discovered this, you know, several months ago. But when I discovered it, I was like, oh my gosh! It's just one of those buttons I never pressed. Mm -hmm. But it's really, really cool on your home screen. If you find a blank spot on your home screen, you just hold down, hold mm -hmm. down your thumb and press. And then of course it pops up and it allows you to add a widget and that's how you add widgets uh -huh. and so forth. Oh, the folders. I'm the guessing. folders, yes. exactly. The folders are so cool. If you haven't done this, mm -hmm. um, and, and not only the folders, but what I use it for is, is really special. It's so cool for me. I, I hold it down, create a new folder, blank folder, and then you just have an empty folder. Then you touch the folder and it opens up the folder full screen. Then at the top it just says folder, but you hold down on the word folder and it pops up and it allows you to change the name of the folder. So I have a folder called Only One TV, I have one called Brunch Club, I have one called Family, one called Friends, one called, you know, Sponsors, everything, you know, everything. And then I have these little folders all over the screen and in them, here's what I do. Okay, so back to your home screen, you go to the contact and I, I'll find Manny Mena. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, hit, I go to his contact record, right? And then I hit menu. Uh, and then there's a button that says add contact to home screen. So then I just do add contact to home screen and it pops a, a contact on the home screen. Now, if there's no room on my home screen, it'll put it all the way on the screen on the left, which is kind of weird, but it yeah. doesn't matter. Once it's there, all I do is drag it over to the right and just keep dragging it screen after screen until I find the folder and drag it right onto that folder. And I put the contact record for mm -hmm. each person into one of these folders. And so like if Manny is in uh, Friends and he's also in Only One TV and he's also in Hosts, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So you can be in multiple folders, but I pop open production and I see all the production people. You know, it's just a little way to group people yeah. for super easy, like, and then and when I hit contact, now I can decide, do I want to email him, text him, call him, G-talk him, like every, yeah. tweet him, whatever. Which it's you just do a, all of those. <laughs> of course, yeah, especially if it's urgent, you know, like, do 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 like machine gun the whole way. But it's awesome, and I even have contacts for, like, an email address for Google Groups, so I can mm -hmm. hit that, I can hit, uh, you know, Bitcoin people, boom, and I send an email yeah. to that mailing list, and the whole, uh, you know, the whole group gets it. It's just really yeah. super easy way to group people. That, uh, that's what I love. Android has a lot of little tips and tricks like that, which mm -hmm. we're going to have to cover over the time. Yeah. Um, another, I just have a quick couple of ones that I really wanted to point out very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyanogen Mod comes with ADW Launcher, mm -hmm. which is what's so great about Android is you can change almost every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And ADW is supposed to be a more efficient, um, a launcher which is which is where you hit your menu button or whatever and it has mm -hmm. the launcher down there mm -hmm. uh, basically um, I set it up so I have five icons down there they're my most used apps mm -hmm. so I could be on any page in the home screen and uh -huh. I'll have those apps and then on there I'm actually gonna go over those apps because they're like I use them all the time um, there's Opera Mobile which is just an amazing mobile browser. Uh, you could have, you okay. know, your home screen with favorites in there. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Bitcoin News, so I always tap on that. So mm -hmm. when I'm on the way here to the Bitcoin <laughs> show, I could catch up on anything. The uh, you could save pages, which is great because once I get on the path in New York, I have no signal the whole ride, mm. and if I don't have a book to read. Um, I could, you know, just oh, preload you save pages the page to offline, read. the web page. Yep, I could nice. save it offline and then mm -hmm. I load it up later and I could mm -hmm. read. Nice. And, um, you know, this way I'm entertained and I'm not, you know, staring at random strangers all yeah. day. <laughs> um, and then another one is Handescent SMS, mm -hmm. which is like an amazing, amazing uh, messaging app. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you style it completely. Um, it has a lot of different options. It's integrated with some of their services, which I don't use. I just love how it groups everything. And um, how it how it just displays all the information that it, I just love it. When I, we now when we root Chris's phone, are we gonna put that mod on it, or is that? Yeah, it's gonna be can, with Cyanogen mod. Oh, okay, so once you root it, that you you have to root it with a modification like that. Well, the firmware is like the whole operating system package, mm -hmm. so it's gonna come, um, you know, with a launcher. Because how you gonna launch apps without a launcher? Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna come with a lot of with some preloaded stuff. 
-hmm. And then, you know, you as a user have the flexibility, the freedom and the choice, mm -hmm. you know, to put whatever you want on there and to customize it as you choose. Like, um, we're going to work a way to, to get this mm -hmm. on the screen eventually. Yeah. But uh, over here, I always have it showing, you know, my battery life and percentage. It shows me the time. I have a rotary, you know, thing over here. Um, I set it so that my trackpad unlocks the screen so I don't have to physically move oh, it all the right. time. So I can do one-handed operation easily. Um, it's just amazing stuff that you could do and how it integrates with everything. Like, um, you could do the up or down scrolling or the pages scrolling, you know, left to the right. Mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing. And then Very even cool. visual effects and stuff like that. Like, I have it set up when I turn it off, it does like a TV turning off kind of thing. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I Which I absolutely love. Like, it's so <laughs> cool that it does that. Sometimes I, the little things, right? Yeah, the little things, you know, that, that really make you go overboard. And then there's another one that maybe it shouldn't be on the list, but uh, it's um, Power Amp. Because mm -hmm. I actually, I haven't upgraded the um, stereo system in my car yet. Mm. So I use the cassette to my phone and it's how I listen to my phone. And Power Amp is freaking awesome. Like just how it, it lets you, um, it, let's say if you're using the navigation at the same time mm -hmm. with a stock music player, it will not pause. It's going to be, you know, the music and then the navigation instructions going over the music. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it doesn't sound great, but this gives you the option to pause it. Yeah. Um, it categorizes everything for you. It has like a folder view. So like the folder structure is awesome versus, you know, like a library because I have mm -hmm. everything set up in specific folders and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It downloads album art automatically, has a built in equalizer. It, it just does That's everything amazing. that you could possibly ever want in a music app. And then um, when I'm bored, I go on Reddit is fun, which is like Reddit's, you know, third party. It's not know, the app. official Reddit app, but another it, app. It's like supported by Reddit officially, mm, kind mm, of. Mm, um, mm. And um, it's just amazing. I, I'm on it all the time. Oh, I need uh, that. Yeah. Because we're going to talk about like hot topics and all that. And Reddit is the new dig. Well, right? Reddit, is, <laughs> um, it's not new, but. Um, no, it's not new, but it's like the new number one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There is a whole. It was kind of, I guess, famous in internet history, a whole mm. dig versus Reddit thing right. that went on. Yeah, that was always interesting, but mm -hmm. I've been on Reddit for like years and I freaking love Reddit. Reddit is so awesome. Cool. I know the 4chan people are going to bash it, but you know, <laughs> I'm a Reddit guy. And then another one is set CPU, mm -hmm. which is important if you're rooted um, mm. because it allows you to underclock and overclock your CPU. So I have certain profiles set up where as my, bot, my battery is draining, mm -hmm. it's going to underclock the CPU. You could even underclock the voltage depending on how your processor is set up in the profiles. So it'll use less electricity that way. And then another one, the last one is a car, which I use to track all maintenance on my vehicle. Um, when I put wow. in gas uh, or diesel, I have a diesel TDI. Um, when I put in diesel, when I do maintenance, when I buy parts, um, any expense, car washes, I could log that all in there. It tells me how many miles I've driven. It gives me estimates on what I could do on the tank. It gives me charts with uh, fluctuating prices of diesel um, and my miles to the gallon that I'm getting. Um, gives me reminders on services. You know, I do most of the work myself on the car. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll set up, okay, I did the oil change and this and that. Uh, so it's a really awesome app. It's Sounds called right. ACAR. If you're a car person, you know, use ACAR. <laughs> if you want to find out your mileage or keep track of maintenance, ACAR is the way cool. to do it. <laughs> I so, think he likes ACAR. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and, so those are um, like vital apps that I use all the time. I want to tell you about one more app, and we, like, we're really out of time already, but let me, yeah. I just want to thank our sponsors one more time, and uh, they make it possible for us to be here. That's Carpe VM Video Marketing, C-A-R-P-E-V-M.com, Video Marketing, Seizure Market, Say It With Video, and Mezzi Grill, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor right here in Midtown Manhattan near Columbus Circle. M-E-Z-E, grill.com. Check it out. They have amazing food. And tradehill.com, the place to buy Bitcoins online. Easy way to get money in and out of Bitcoins. Super fast, super convenient. 10% off trades for life with our referral code TH-R141, tradehill.com. And U.S. Gold Coins, our trusted advisor for excellent investments in rare U.S. gold and silver coins. We thank our sponsors. 
And one Absolutely. last app I gotta get in because we're out of time already. We gotta get like one minute. But um, it that is, fast. Yeah. it went by so fast. We're gonna, we're gonna do a whole, note, a whole show on routing and a whole show on battery life. But one last app is Seismic. I think it's S E E S M I K. Oh, the Twitter app. Yeah, that's the Twitter app, and it's, it's actually it's like Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. But I only use it for Twitter. Oh, but yeah. I love it. There's so many things I love about it. Um, it. It just it gives you notifications the way you want, and it gives you know tweet lo tweet longer is built in, and so many things. I'm gonna it's pick really your brain easy. about that because maybe one day, yeah. one of, someday in the future, I'll start getting on Twitter. I'm I'm huge into Twitter, and I, I love the searches. I can just put yeah. Ubuntu. I can do put Bitcoin, and I, I that's actually my Reddit. I, I do they're saved searches, so I touch mm. Bitcoin and I see everything that people yeah. are tweeting about Bitcoin. It's like faster than anything. So oh I yeah, it. I was looking on one of the sites where I was reading an article about Bitcoin on one of the Bitcoin sites, yep. and We're out I, of time. I had a Twitter oh. feed. For <laughs> okay, is that it? We're out of time. All right, guys. We will we'll see you the same time next week. Thank you so much awesome. for joining us on Android Invasion, the first episode. Yeah, let's invade some, some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys next week.